Exactly six years and six months after the first shots of the Revolutionary War were fired at Lexington and Concord, General George Washington had spent most of the war evading fixed battles against the superior armed British forces. But Providence intervened. Lieutenant General Lord Cornwallis, commander of British forces in Virginia and second in command of all British forces in the American colonies, had moved into a trap, setting up camp in Yorktown. Located on a peninsula and facing the York River, Cornwallis was easily encircled by Continental Army troops on one side and a powerful French fleets on another. On October 6th, Washington's army, now reinforced with 5,500 French troops, were making preparations for their planned assault on the 9th. At the same time, a French fleet, numbering 28 ships of the line, had prevented any chance of a British escape by water. By mid-month, the British were cut off from their supply lines, denying them much needed food and ammunition. With his forces suffering heavy casualties from Washington's continual artillery bombardment, and knowing his reinforcements were still weeks away, Lord Cornwallis did the unthinkable. He surrendered his forces to what had been called a band of rabble, effectively ending America's war for independence. The date was the 19th of October, 1781. With the signing of the Treaty of Paris in 1783, the war officially came to a close with America's sovereignty secured and its territories bordered by Canada to the north, Florida to the south, and the Mississippi River to the east. For Newsmax TV, I'm Bill Curtis, and this is an American Moment. When it comes to our constitutional rights, our voice matters. Participate in this Newsmax survey by following the link below this video and let your voice be heard.